and so forth, the tendency that normally exists of unifying this uh, comes to a halt. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, states also have a profound effect on the development of languages. Uh, on the one hand, of course, they sometimes forcibly uh, expand certain types of languages within their territory, eliminate, so to speak, certain uh, languages and make some languages the official language of, uh, of the country. On the other hand, by doing this, as the other side of the same coin, of course, they also disrupt, so to speak, the natural tendency of people to learn different languages and on the fringes of, uh, of different territories for people to speak multiple uh, multiple languages, and in a way also prevent uh, the development of uh, some languages that are used as international languages. Just think of uh, what happened, so to speak, to Latin, uh, which used to be the, uh, the language of international communication uh, for hundreds of years all through Europe. Uh, Latin basically disappears in this function as soon as national states come into existence. It is then uh, that French is spoken, German is spoken, and so forth, and, uh, and Latin becomes, yeah, if it does not die out immediately, uh, it becomes a language that is spoken less and less, and in the end it becomes, so to speak, just uh, a relic that uh, that some strange people still learn in in strange people in strange places without really knowing why because nobody except the pope and uh, and his pe and his people actually speak that language. Uh, also, currently going on with English, I think I, if we. Perceive English as a natural language at this point for international trade and communication. There are a lot of countries who try to resist the influence of English by all kinds of ridiculous rules, like no English songs more than 40% on the radio, or in France, for example, you can't write email as a bureaucrat, you have to write courriel or something. Yeah, but, but, but in the English case, an additional aspect enters the picture, and that is. In the status of English as a dominant language similar to Latin owes its existence, of course, to the fact of imperialism. Um, that is, whereas the adoption of Latin as the international language was in a way an organic, an organic phenomenon that had very little to do with, uh, uh, with uh, one place occupying another place and so forth, whereas uh, nowadays English is of course uh, promoted by the very fact that the United States is of course the dominant country and, and can impose in a way its language uh, at least as the second most important language in, uh, in various places. But by and large, again, you are right in the sense that there is, so to speak, a tendency for having a universal language and that states, of course, do make attempts to just prevent this development of, of a universal language uh, appearing on the scene. Um, okay, I'm done. T take a few questions. Yes. I guess uh, Ebonics will be having its breakthrough in, in, in the future, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't the dominance of English today more attributable to increased trade and communication than imperialism? Um, it, is a, it is a mixture of these, uh, of these things. Um, look, um, English was not, for instance, the, uh, the second most important language in Germany before World War II. Uh, it was actually Latin and French. Um, 
After World War II, English clearly became language number, foreign language number one. Um, this, that had nothing to do with, with trade or so. That had something to do with Germany lost the war. The United States was the leading place there, the leading uh, occupier there. Uh, and they enforced their uh, their language on on the German school system. Uh, that happened also in the East German part, for instance. The, the Russians enforced Russian as being the second most uh, the, the second most important language in East Germany. Where people at that time, so it was easier to impose on the West Germans English because English was number three before. Uh, whereas, of course. Sh- Nobody in East Germany even contemplated in its uh, its most far-fetched dreams ever learning Russian. Um, uh, And all of a sudden now they had uh, had to learn Russian. And the consequence was after the Russians disappeared from uh, East Germany, the people just wanted to forget about Russian. That is, you would then think somehow the people who after having invested a certain amount of time into learning this sort of stuff, even if there is no force behind it anymore, you would maintain your skill. But what happened by and large was people hated it so much that they made an effort uh, to forget even what they knew. Um, in, in, in many in many countries, yes, I think that's probably true for Poland and those countries too. Even for them, it was even far easier to learn Russian because it was, those were both Slavic languages. Whereas for Germans, it was quite difficult to learn uh, to learn Russian. Uh, yeah. Um, what is in the U.S. today? What are the numbers or the preponderance of? Parasites versus producers of a, of adults. Uh, I have seen figures that one out of every two uh, employed or working people in America today actually is a bureaucrat. 